This is a very special Celtic View podcast. I'm delighted to be joined in the stadium by Robert Hodgins and Ken McCluskey, better known as, as two of the founding members of the Bluebells, one of Scotland's finest bands. Welcome to Paradise, guys. Thanks, Thanks for having us. us. Yeah, thank you. It's great to be here again. Now, I know you're not unfamiliar faces to the stadium being, being Celtic fans, but today for the podcast, we're obviously going to chat about the new music that's going to come up, some of the, the older music, a lot of Celtic, and you're also going to perform two songs from the new album for us as well. Yeah. Now, for people who are fans of the band, uh, they will remember the, the classic Sisters album back in 1984. Now, the, the new album that's, that's just about to, to drop, Blue, Blue Bells in the 21st Century, is actually just your second studio album. That's technically quite a long time for a, for a follow-up. Well, we did have, we've had like three or four sort of albums that are they're not official albums, they're kind of outtake albums, like old demos and stuff like that. But this is officially, this is the second album. In 30? 40 years exactly. 40 19, years. 1983, we recorded Sisters in. So it's recent 1984, but we recorded in 83. So it's, this is 2023, so virtually so, 40 years. Yeah, we're, we're less prolific than the Blue Nile. <laughs> <laughs> now the album's, I think, due to come out in May. Yeah, already, April, April 28th. Uh, April 28th. Yeah, yeah. It's been so, brought forward due to... Demand. Popular demand. <laughs> but people can already hear some of the, the songs. I know Gone Tomorrow and also Blue Train mm-hmm. are available that people can start streaming so they can actually get a, a sense of yeah. of the feel of the new album already. Yeah, they'll be, on, they'll be available digitally at the, at the moment. In terms of, of you know writing and recording new music, how was that? Because obviously, as you say, it's 40 years since the, you kind of recorded that first album. Is there still the same excitement? Because you've got 40 years of life experience to put into these songs as well. Yeah, it, it was. That's the best bit of it. You described there is the songwriting and the recording. Luckily, me, Ken, and David have always wrote songs since the Blue Bells finished, and we've been involved in various other projects. But there's always been songs, particularly in my case and Ken, Ken's case, that w- we've always thought this would be a Blue Bell. I've always thought it would be a Blue Bell song, yeah. and Ken's probably the same, you know. So that's that's why we got together after Sisters did really well on its, on its re-release. And the record company, Ian, the guy in the record company, was very keen for us to do a new album, and we were very keen to do it too. Yeah. So last night for Glasgow's this kind of patronage label. It's, they've got 500 members, so the 500 members pay like 100 quid a year, and they get six albums, and then the money goes, just keeps on being invested into it. So it's just really good. It's good for up-and-coming new bands and then old codgers like ourselves, so it, it sort of finances us. So, it's, so we're members of it, so we pay it, you know, so it, it goes around, it's like a book club or something like that, and then it goes on sale to the public like a month later or whatever. But the, uh, the songs, we'd started playing gigs again maybe five or six years ago or something like that, as the Blue Bells, because there's this kind of nostalgia thing, and we did a few of those rewind things and all that, but they were a wee bit, they're a wee bit tedious, actually, you know. Um, so you're on for five minutes or ten minutes or whatever. Oh, it's the Bluebells. Oh, it's banana. No, it's not banana. It's you know yeah. Tony Hadley or whatever. You're on for you know Limal. Frankie goes to Hollywood kind uh, of thing. And then it's, it's a wee bit. And we thought we want a wee bit more than this because it's it's like being in a circus sort of thing. So we started playing full gigs, like full sets, and to really amazed you know amazing crowds. So we thought, well, there's there's a kind of market for it. You know, people want to hear new stuff. They don't want to just hear you doing your your album again, don't want to hear Young Art again, you know, yeah. so it's, it was a good impetus for us to start writing again, as, was, as the Blue Bills. I was lucky enough to see you playing Orin Moore back in February, and I thought what, what I liked about it was, I mean, it was a great venue, it was a great atmosphere, but I think the best bands get that balance right between playing songs that people will remember back in the day, and there's obviously certain songs that yeah. if people come to see the Blue Bills, they'll want to hear, yeah. but within that, there were the new songs, which I think, as a result, you get a really receptive audience for it. Yeah. It's a bit of a luxury, actually, isn't it? When you've, you've got a good sort of back catalogue, and then the, the, the good thing about playing these new songs with the old stuff, so they stand up, they stand up, and they actually sound like the yeah, same yeah. band. Really. Kids, right? You, you can tell. We, I'm saying to you earlier on, when when you're on stage, you can tell that, they're st- that like Ken said, they, they're standing up. The songs didn't sound out of place. It wasn't. There wasn't a drop in energy. You know, yeah. when we did a new song, and it wasn't a massive lift in energy. We did an old song. It was, it was a lot of affection in the room, and yeah. that was really encouraging. Well, you sometimes you go and see bands. And say, yeah, this is one for the new album, and everybody goes, oh. No. Aye. <laughs> and that band are called Oasis. We, 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 we didn't hear the, the sigh. We didn't, we didn't hear the sigh. So that's that's quite encouraging. Well, <laughs> <shot for that. laughs> is there still a wee bit of? Is it still a bit nervous or apprehensive when you're playing? 
because obviously you guys will be writing new songs and then you get to the point where you're really happy with them uh -huh. but then when the wider public have to hear them either live or, or listen yeah. to them on record just to see what the reaction is. We were quite, we were quite fortunate having yeah. the space to play some of them live and that's a tester, a tester so you can always tell by the reaction of a crowd kind of like it so if you get a good reaction you're like well that's, that's good and sometimes when you're playing live you go there's maybe an extra two bars there that shouldn't be there you know there's an awkward bit or something like that so you just edit that so by the time you get to the studio you've kind of edited it and you've got the song all together and they've got a fantastic band i mean if, if you think about a band like campbell from ash tech camera you know douglas mcintyre obviously is like on fire at the moment you know and and uh, mick slavin's one of the best guitar players in the world i would say yeah. So there's, there's always a, a bit where you realise that if I just stop here for a few seconds, no one's going to miss because yeah. they, they're they just... On, and David, my know. brother's in the background, keep yeah, it all yeah, together. He's so a they, great, they've got a great drummer. They've got, they've got, they're really good to play with and we've been friends for years with them, so we've got a good understanding with each other, which is great. And I wondered as well, the, the title of the album, The Blow Bells in the 21st Century, I'm guessing that's maybe deliberate just to let people know, kind of to was, your point, Ken, that it was, this isn't, we want to do new stuff. It yeah. was, Paul, we, we, it was, like Ken was saying earlier, we don't want to be, have pictures of us as 18, 20 on album sleeves anymore. I mean, we're happy to, I'm happy to be in this age, Ken's happy, we've got, we've got family, we've got children, and if we were starting a band now in the 21st century, that's what it would sound like, and we are in the 21st century, and, and I, I just think, I, I mentioned it before in another interview, that, um, Musicians get better. I think football players get better, you know. But there's a cut-off point for football players where physically they just can't can't do it. I don't think in music that that physical, as Rod's proved, yeah. you know. That, 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 that I think musicians get better. Although I've got better at football. That's true. Actually, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're at a very low start point. <laughs> very low start. <laughs> How is that for your families then? That because you know, obviously, as they're grown up, they'll be able to go on YouTube and see old videos and, and yeah, stuff yeah. of you performing, but then actually to bring that right up to date That's and right. to be able to watch you perform. Aye. So they come, we do quite a lot of festivals now, so like last year we did doing the rabbit hole, so we bring all the kids, So all the, and then they bring their pals. And they ended up on stage with us as well, yeah. so I mean, they, they, so, they love it. Yeah, they've heard of the word guest list now, they're like, yeah. can I get my pal on the guest list? Yeah. Can I get a free pass? Yeah. Can I get a free camping pass for doing yeah. the rabbit hole or something like that? So yeah. they love it and it's great. They can you just, get me in the sub club? Yeah. Yeah. You know, they hi. just wander about and all that, yeah, and, and do their own thing. So there's lots of benefits there. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's, it's a cheap holiday. <laughs> <laughs> and you get paid for it as well. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'd mentioned before that, that you're going to play uh, two songs for us off the album, and the first of those songs is a song called Stonehouse Violet. Yeah. Ken, can you explain a wee bit about yeah. how that song came well, about? Well, it came about because my son plays junior football for St Rocks Development Squad and you go to all these mental places like, uh, not mental places, like <laughs> lovely places like <laughs> Coburnie and, and, and Johnston and, and Beath and, and uh, Lochy and all these places, you know, so they're all mentioned in the song. So when I started going to these places and because you're the dad and you're driving them, you've always got an hour hanging about the car park. You know, before the game starts or before training starts or whatever. So you're in, you know, Ayrshire or Lanarkshire or whatever, uh, Thornywood or something like that. And I just got the idea, a good idea for a song, but make any kind of love song. So like a couple who met a junior football, but they've got a love for junior football. And it's the foundation of everything junior football, isn't it? So it was good. So, and I just thought, I like getting all the teams in, St Rocks and Anthony's, Mary Hill, all that. So, but, all the ones we put in, so I put in Ben Burb and St Anthony's for Robert because he's from Govan. Hey. <laughs> Thorny Wood and Blanter because I'm from Bottle. Do you know what I mean? So, blah, blah. but these are all the pictures that he's played at. So it was, it was about that, but making a love, of, making any asking kind a of love interest or anything. Well, without further ado. Oh, and also, sorry, also the fact uh, that Stonehouse Violet went down to Swanee. So they went bankrupt after they got to the cup final. So they had a big sort of spot to go to the cup final and then just after that they got beat 1-0 and then they all fell apart sort of thing. Well, so it's kind of a tragedy there as well. Yeah. A special acoustic version of the song now with the, the wonderful backdrop of, of Celtic Park. As Absolutely, well. yes. Come knocking, knocking late I followed you to Thornywood and Johnsonboro for the crack 
One of the things that that song, when I was listening to it, the just even lyrically, it was actually the you know the Dylan song. I think I'll I'll go anywhere. Yeah, I mean, I, it was just that kind of the way that you're kind of listing all these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Famous. Well, there's that. Well, we're big Dylan group. fans. It's a traditional thing. A list. We love list songs. It's yeah. funny you mention that. There's yeah. plenty of songs that will list. You know, like especially America, all the cities, St. Yeah. Louis, Route 66. You know, yeah. mentions every road, every town on yeah, on the road, yeah, and it, it's it's the, it's Oklahoma. beautiful yeah. way you write a song. Yeah. You know? yeah, that was the first thing when ah, I, good, when I that's, live that's good. I'm glad you got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, just I think it's yeah. and I think it's a really wee picture. So we'll do a video to that, and it'll probably have all those like, flickering images in it. You know, maybe club badges or I was thinking of the video should be me taking a penalty against my wife. <laughs> a, different, a, different, a different junior football guys, you know, and, and each time, I, you know, she gets better, and I get better. It's probably be against the penalties, man. <laughs> I think as the kids say, that might go viral. Yeah, <laughs> that would be good, then, then actually, the, last, yeah. the last one, she saves it. <laughs> Great, I said, off, they do VAR. <laughs> they do VAR. I, go, I go mental, and then she sets me off. So I can tell you've thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's it. I did a wee sketch about it. <laughs> that would be good, actually. Yeah. In terms of, of the football, I mentioned right at the start, uh, you're big Celtic fans, we're, we're back here at Celtic Park. And what, in terms of the, the club, what would be your earliest memories come back to? My earliest memory, I was thinking of this other day because I saw a picture on social media and I was like, I was at that again. I was about nine and I was in the main stand over here, but it hadn't been built yet. It's 1971, so I was nine. And my dad knew a brickie called Jimbo Holland too, from Bordeaux, where I'm from. 
and he was working on that. He was a bricklayer at Parkhead, and my dad was a bricklayer. So he gave him, I don't know, access to this when it was getting built. It was a building site. It was just the foundations were done. Mm. And it was against Clyde, and it was 6-1. And Bertie all sat in the ball. And it was the last game that the Lisbon Lions ever played together. Wow. And Ronnie Simpson just came on for a wee, because he was pretty old, I think, at that time. He just came on for a wee while, and then he went off after five minutes. Or I think he just came on and waved, actually. And they lined up, and then it was, oh, that was the last game that they yeah, all played a, together. That's a special game, because the, the Lions, <coughs> as, a, as an 11, didn't really play that many games, so to have that's right. Yeah, that's right, their yeah. very last game, that's yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, so I, re I really remembered that, because I was speaking to Joe Sullivan, who works for the Celtic View, and I thought it was 8-1, but he's Stato. He's Stato, so being a nine-year-old, I don't think it's 8-1. Maybe, maybe they'd score eight, but they only counted six or something like that. But, uh, but it was 6-1 against Clyde. Over yourself, what? Well, my, my dad was a Rangers supporter, so um, my first football match... I thought he was an engineer. He was an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> engineer, Rangers supporter, man. But, uh, People will understand that joke but, later on. <laughs> <laughs> but my, my father did bring me here one time, and he did say, at the end of it, you, then you come here, you're coming on your own, you know. So I, I came out with my friends from school. But my memories of this place are, are really simple, man. Like, when at that age, is, it is, was walking from one end of the ground to the other when Celtic changed the ends. Which I think is a big miss, you know. I, I oh, think yeah, yeah. what I really, I, I love Club Football, but I think it's quite a drag sitting beside the same people every every week. I mean, yeah. you used to meet, make so many friends and meet so many people when when you could, yeah, wander. And you're a wee guy. It was an adventure. It was an adventure. You know, it was an adventure. And you came, and, and even children can't come on their own now. And we were, we were really young. We were going to gigs mm. really young. I mean, it, it's, it's changed the way that. that uh, I guess it's safer. The children are really, my wee boy's 12, you know, he's been here. But David Law took us to his box. But my wee boy thinks you get a butler every time because of football now, you know, he, goes to, he says to his pals, ah, football's great, anything you want, they bring it to you. Yeah. You know, like, and you're thinking, wow, I mean, and that, and he's even kind of saying about yeah. kids going to gigs, our kids think yeah. gigs are backstage yeah. passes and foods all there, and, yeah. you know, you well, can bring to, your friends. We used to collect in, you know? all the empty cans and stand on them so you yeah. could see over the wall and all that, you know, so you could see over the jungle. We used to come here, this, this end here, actually. Because we were also talking, you know, before we started doing the interview about, you know, having been here for gigs back, back in the day as well. Um, yeah. Rod Stewart played here. Prince. You saw Prince playing here as well, yeah. which... Well, I saw nice. Prince, but it was... Uh, they, they put, uh, there was about three days putting the lights up and then Prince came on, but the lights didn't work because it was broad daylight. It's this middle of the summer. And you just saw Prince, you know, a yellow suit on. <laughs> but uh, aye, it was good. It was, like, it, was, it was ideal for gigs. I wish I'd been at the one in The, the Who, but in 1976, was it? I was here for you too. I was under the stage for you too. And they had the bass player under the stage, yeah. man. I'll never forget it. Not the bass player who's on stage, <laughs> not the bass player. <laughs> I'm thinking, what's going on there? I mentioned right at the, the start of the interview that we're going to hear two songs. We've already heard one. The second one, we're just about to hear is Daddy Was an Engineer, which I think is the opening track yeah. in, in the new album. Robert, you tell us a wee bit about that song. Well, again, it goes back to Kim's was talking about his, his son and Stonehouse Violets. Mine's was me trying to tell my son Ruben, who's never met his granddad, what what his uh, grand his grandfather you know, what he did, you know. Obviously he could take it in, so I mean he had no idea what a shipyard was, he had no idea what night shift was, and no idea what an engineer was. So I tried to make it into like something that related to me from my father to me, from me to my mm. son, you know. I mean, mm. Younger Hearts got a similar theme, you know, it's about how you don't, I think we've both experienced it, we, we don't really realise what your parents do for you until you actually have your own children, you know, and like when we were growing up, we had this, I mean, we, we were out clubbing or gigging, <laughs> I mean, as much as possible. I spent a lot of time with my kid in Kenda, as well as my father had no choice, he had to, he had, oh, yeah. Ken's father too. They had to make yeah. a living, you know, yeah. and, and so there was none of that kind of like um, bonding, as you would call it, though obviously we're really close to our fathers, but it's just explaining to him that how privileged, I think, children in our business are, yeah, yeah, and, and even yeah. footballers, kids as well, you know, like, I know there's a lot of kids there who haven't got any privileges, and that's the that's what we've got to remember all the time, you know, that that uh, we should take what we give our kids for granted. It's quite nice as well to have that <clears throat> that connection that, you know, it's almost like you're, you're able to connect the three generations and, and maybe I get the connection between yeah. your son and, and, and your dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I was trying to get, I mean, my, my daughter met, met my father, you know, she's 22, like, and it, 
it was a big thing for my dad because at that point he'd retired, you know. And uh, but I wish he'd met my son too, you know, because yeah. I think it would have been he'd have been he's he's my girlfriend's father and. and but he's got a great bond with his grandson, my I, Matt Rubin. So I'm, really, I'm really jealous of seeing him enjoying Rubin's company and vice versa. I remember it well, I was feeling so blue, so I said to my pal, What's your boy gonna do? And he told me, he looked me straight in the eye. He said, this world is a sham, you gotta do what you can. He said, this running around was always dragging us down. You gotta work hard and keep your head high. It's up and it's down, but for once in your life, you gotta let it go. Life can be so unfair Once in a while you'll disappear Oh, my daddy was an engineer Instead of making some plans He had to work with his hands He said the school in the round Was gonna bring him right down He had to work hard just to work it all out True, he had dreams But his plans and his schemes They always fell apart Oh, my daddy was an engineer He said, son, life can be so unfair You'll disappear Oh, my daddy was an engineer You gotta take life as it comes Ride your luck Deep down you know that life can suck An engineer an engineer, an engineer, an engineer, an engineer, an engineer, an engineer, an engineer. Oh, my daddy was an engineer. I had mentioned, obviously, that you guys, long standing Celtic fans. Again, for those of us of a certain age, remember the centenary season, Big Billy coming back, winning the yeah. double, all these last minute goals. But that season as well, with the Celtic story at the Pavilion, I don't think any club had ever done anything like that. Yeah. Brian Wilson wrote the, the history of Celtic. Again, there was very few football books, but also there was a, a special record that came out, the, the Wally Malloy experience, um, the Celtic centenary EP. I rummaged about in my loft to find my copy, and you guys were, were absolutely front and centre of of doing that record yeah well it was it was um, it was a, a Celtic unofficial Celtic sports club called the Willie Malloy uh, f- f- sports, uh, club. sports club we'd be, from, we'd be cards and all that they're from, really great, yeah. they're from Dentoker and it was a guy called Arthur Haggerty who was the, the sort of brains behind the operation and it, they were really funny it was like a, a punk rock it was like a punk rock Celtic sports club or something like that and everything was it was I mean really funny we had really funny times with them and they asked us to uh, put this together because they didn't know how to record or whatever. So we got a studio, we did it in 24 hours, and we did all these lovely it's tracks Arthur, here. Yeah. Celtic, Celtic, Arthur's 70 this year, so uh-huh. happy birthday, Arthur. Yeah. Arthur. We're going to go to his party yeah. and maybe play a song at Arthur's party. Yeah. Um, but we put on, it was great. So it's the Celtic song, Holy Ground, over and over. And then we did a kind of house music, it had to be Celtic. That was Kenny Hislop, that used to be in Slick. And Fantastic track, Simple Minds, he was so, in, yeah. So it was 88, so that was his kind of house music thing. So 88 was, when house music kind of started, so it was quite hip. It was kind of quite hip. Yeah. When it, it came, was, it yeah, came yeah, here in yeah. 80, 89, so we were kind of quite on it there as well. 
Uh, we got a slice of pizza and some cans of uh, Kestrel <laughs> for making that record. But uh, it was great fun. It was great fun making it. And it sounds good. It sounds kind of really good. I think Tony Roper. Is that Tony Roper on it too, isn't he? I think. No, I don't oh, Jeremy Gregor. Yeah, like Jeremy yeah, Cobble, yeah, yeah, the late Jeremy Gregor. That's right, yeah, Jeremy. Did yeah, he, Arthur got that picture from a guy called Park Woods, who's yeah. a kind of big Celtic historian. Yeah, and that's, obviously that's the day before Lisbon. Is that's right, also. yeah. yeah it's I, it felt at the time, and I felt always felt, you know, that kind of... We kind of hit the zeitgeist then, and it that, did, that was really absolutely did. central to that. As it well. really did. It really did. It did. You're talking about that that year, uh, 1988. Um, they had the Celtic story, which is a huge success. They're bringing that back this year. Yeah. And I'm working it's in the music. That, I'm working the music for that. Brilliant. It's going to be in the the, the Armadillo in September. For, run for two weeks. Bringing it right up to date in terms of, of Celtic. Obviously, since Andrews came in, um, you know, he's phenomenal. We had to build a team from from mm. scratch. Success last season, building on that this season. How, as, again, as supporters, how much have you enjoyed what you've been watching? It's really fantastic. There's a real buzz. I mean, there really is a, a great, a great buzz. Um, we don't go to every game, or we've got season ticket holders or whatever, but we do because we work a lot on a Saturday. When we're doing gigs and all that, um, but we do get to uh, quite a few games. Um, the buzz at the park's amazing, but watching the, the the cup final in the pub last week was really, really quite something. You know, it's a real good buzz with the. Kyogo goals, and uh, he's on fire at the moment. The wee man's on fire, so it's it's really exciting. It's just they just look great. The passing, the, the a young squad too. You can only see it get better, you know. And, yeah. and hopefully, the young players coming through as well. Yeah, that would be great if we get more more young players, local players coming through as well. Yeah. And obviously, again, I've mentioned the fact that you've got this new album coming out. Are you going to be playing live gigs over the summer as well? We've got a bunch of live gigs. We're doing Belladrum Festival, which is up in Inverness. Uh, we're doing the next gig we've got in Glasgow is St Luke's, St. Luke's which is June the fourth, yeah. and that's a kind of album launch. Yeah. So the tickets are going very fast. Yeah. So uh, uh, and St Luke's is a great gig, and it's, it's just down the road there in the Carlton. So it's. Uh, Do you still get the same excitement again? You know, with the the build up to the launch to of the new extent, album. And to a certain extent, more so because when you're young, you're just kind of nonchalant. You know what I mean? You're just like, all oh, right, this is what I do, sort of thing. Whereas now, when you're a wee bit older, and we've done straight jobs and we've done we've had a lot of work experience doing different things uh, it's a real thrill it's a real thrill and it's it's, it's like a like can I say getting your families I mean festivals like Belgium yeah. we've done that before and it's a very getting your family to get so it's, good. it's a very, very it's a very it's a very <laughs> very friendly festival very a very, very um, family oriented yeah. festival you know no but the, the the vibe of playing live is probably better I mean I think it's, it's it feels really natural you know it feels and as, as Bob was saying uh, we've got a great band, so it's it's like playing. You know, it's it's you talk about playing five or six with your mates earlier, and it's the same thing. Although you're playing, you're playing music also with your mates. There's you no, know. no pressure on us to succeed. We've succeeded. Yeah. So if you get my drift, but it's like I remember when we did Top of the Pops in 1993 when it's back at number one. People were shocked at how how blase we were all about it because nothing they could do to the television couldn't say to you if you keep doing that, yeah. you won't want the show next week. Yeah. We just like okay, but we just kept on doing it, you know. Yeah. And then, but the but the second or third time they got it, the BBC and they were encouraging us. They were actually building yeah. sets for us, you know. Yeah. What what you're doing this week, guys, you know. Yeah. And it, so it really, I think, I, I think a lot of bands have gone top to pops. We saw it, and you think, what? Why are you in this business? If you can't enjoy this, you know, obviously, you know, no, obviously, like the mics here, but they're like. Or the dog might be, you know, just to try and show off or whatever. Yeah. We went for it, but there was one bit when it came back, nineteen ninety three. That the, the, the backing tracks, it's actually a backing track, right? So it's a tape. But the only tape they could find was an unedited version of Young at Hearts. There was four extra bars, which didn't do any. So it was like little, 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 nothing. Just so the we, drums. We thought <laughs> just the drums. Well, all right, we need to do fill that in. So I was singing live. So the rest of it was backing track. But I was singing live. So we, me and Bob each week were just Make throwing ideas stuff. about yeah, yeah. So Shabba was number one the week before. And uh, so we sang a bit of that. We it? sang Shabba. <laughs> and we got the guy to go, Shabba, Shabba, Shabba. And then we did techno, techno, techno. Remember that you Dutch band? Did Dutch? That techno, <laughs> techno, techno. And then, what, Unlimited. And then when you were down the charts, we all got white top hats and all that. And we did, there's no business like And they were at that point, they were loving it at that point. Until the See, the thing is, it's like everything, it's like you, you can tell when, Celtic love playing football. 
the players. I mean, all of them. You can see when they come, when, they, when they're not picked up, when Jota comes on, you never seen a happy guy in your whole life, have you? Than, than Jota or, or Kyle yeah. man, right? You know, so that, that, that has to come across. And as there will be bands that you go and see, think, I used to think, well, why are they doing this? They almost Aye. look like the most miserable people. Aye. Shouldn't do it. Yeah, that's. I mean, just going to be funny or, but you should go and look like. Go for it. This is you're this an entertainer. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. You're an entertainer. You know what I mean. You're not, go yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not going to go on stage. You're not going to go on stage and be in a huff. You know what I mean. And the other thing, to your point, uh, Robert, was the fact you've been doing it for so long. You know what you're doing, and you, I, you get you feel you get better as you get older. So when you're going on stage, you kind of there's a confidence there, I suppose. Aye, aye, absolutely. No, I was just thinking. That's just this man thought there. You're talking about substitutions and job yeah, yeah. and dead happy. Imagine you did that and. Drummer half time. Traffic got very well. A wee bit slow there. Aye, aye, aye. That's a great way to do it. That would be brilliant. Because the one thing I was, I was curious to ask, because obviously for a lot of people, when I was saying that you know you were coming in the Bluebells, and obviously the first song people, a lot of people think of is Young at Heart. Do you have to kind of, you know, you embrace everything, the positives that that brings with you, but. You know, it's been fantastic for us. I yeah, mean, I yeah. mean, there was a period in time where we we both thought it killed our career because you end up in that kind of agony, like you know, yeah. people people. I mean, we we all of a sudden we were going from being a really cool Glasgow band to never getting mentioned anywhere. People were going, oh, I really like it. You know, Jesus. All of a sudden, you're not the enemy anymore. You know what I mean? You're not the sound. You're not the enemy. And then we would be like, yeah, we'd be like Smokey. Or something it looks like, like you're you know? sold out. Yeah. The thing is, I like Smokey. I know, me too. I mean, and then, now all of a sudden, thanks to people like Stephen Pastel and, and people like that, that there's a kind of real re reassessment of the Blue Wells, yeah. which has been yeah. really David Hepworth and yeah. Peter Pafides, all these big hitting music critics yeah. that really We well, get, get into mm -hmm. this because we were into pop music. Yeah. And through punk rock, it made it really easy for people like us to do it because it went down to basics and you just did a couple of chords, you start off with a couple of chords, you're like, I know three chords. Brilliant, right? So I could write there with four scores. So it started off really, really basic. But the thing we always had was a love of music, a love of pop music. Yeah. First and foremost. We so it wasn't, it wasn't we like we were trying to be dead cool or anything like that. We'd, you know what I mean? Because it, it was a great podcast, I think, the great Scottish albums of all time, and they, and they did the Sisters album. And I think that's the Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of like, yeah. yeah. You know, Allowing people, I think, to get back and, and look at it, and that was a very he did it very well. Yeah, Dave Scott did it, was a great, did it great yeah. show. Yeah. He did it very well, yeah. and, and he done his kind of research. Hadn't it's he? like right. you, you, you're getting that in football too. Now you're getting obviously Greg Taylor is a great example. Like you know, I thought he's always been a good player, but all of a sudden he's he's a fantastic player. I mean, I don't think anything's changed with him, but obviously what he's getting coached and people's assessment of him, and same with you know. With it, with lots of few, few players in there. I mean, you know, but Andy Ralston was another one. I thought, you know, like, I used to stand there or sit over there. He would get heckled the whole game. And you're thinking, what, what, what? what's possibly bu bugging you about this guy who's playing really well, doing the best that, yeah. that, that he can? I mean, I mean, supporting is a yeah. big thing, isn't it? Yeah. But, you, but you always get people who are, that's what's saying about you two about sitting in the same place. You, you always get one guy there. Shouting at the same player. Oh, you always get that. But that's just oh, human. That's, stop. that's, that's, human. Know, that's, that's human nature. You always get the cynic that goes to yeah, the gig yeah, and yeah, goes, yeah. And they went very good. And they come up to you at the end of the gig and go, that wasn't very good, was it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, well, thanks very much. But you always get the cynic. That's such a strange and you get that attitude. I know it's mental. It's frustrating to come to football ground and, and support your team, right? By shouting and bowling. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, I don't care at all. Right? You know, no, I, I think it's just yeah. people. Some people's personalities are bonkers. Yeah. yeah. And it's maybe it's their release. You know, it's the release. They're probably dead nice during, during the yeah, week, and yeah. then they go to the football match. And it's the same in music as well. You get people who are just like, they're waiting for you to break a string or something like that. Or I know, lose hi. your voice or sing flat or something like that, you know. You sing flat. Yeah. Well, listen, guys, it's been a, an absolute pleasure. I think the first time I saw you guys playing was you played a gig back in the ladies in Paisley Town Hall. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We all went to. So that's. That ages me as well. It's, is that where you're from? Ages, no, no, but, uh, from the north side of Glasgow, but yeah. no, we just went there All right, to, cool. to see the band. Um, I'm sure people will enjoy the the two songs that you've played for us. 2023, I'm hoping your album comes out on the 28th of April, and 
Hopefully that will more or less coincide with us uh, winning, winning the league again. Oh, that was fantastic. I, I think it's time for another one of these to come out. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think Celtic <laughs> should get us and all the other bands. Yeah. And, and Glasgow let's go Celtic. Let's, yeah, let's get let's get the Celtic flute. Let's get those Japanese guys and all these guys <laughs> on singing on here, man. Like you know, and get yeah. Jota. Yeah. yeah. Doing the dance mix of it. Do a sort of J-pop sort of thing. Exactly, man. Well, yeah. you, you never know. That, that's the appeal <laughs> being put out now. Yeah. Thanks very much for no joining bother. me. Not really. Thanks for having us, by the way, guys. Cheers. Thanks very much, all of you. Thank you.